Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be sharing all the things over the past year that I have done that have improved my health, my happiness, and my life. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm so excited to share that my new cookbook, Joyful, is officially out for pre-order right now. If your goal for this year is eating more plant-based meals and making food that tastes good but makes you feel good too, then Joyful is the cookbook for you. In Joyful, you'll find over 125 plant-based recipes that balance both health and satisfaction. You'll also find wellness tips from everything from skincare to breathwork practices to help you through your day, along with Ayurvedic tips to help you look and feel your best. It's time to share the joy, people, so go ahead head to www.joyfulbook.com and pre-order it right now. I've been trying to find lots of different practices to really connect me back to nature because we don't just live in nature, we are actually part of nature. And that's why I started incorporating Vivo Barefoot's nine principles of natural health. And one of the practices that I've absolutely loved is grounding or earthing. It's having your bare feet connected to the ground and taking in the energy from it. It helps to reduce inflammation in the body, our stress levels, um, and helps you get better sleep too. And so, when I get the opportunity, I will walk around barefoot. And when I can't be barefoot, I'm in my Vivo barefoot. Whatever movement means to you, just make sure you do it throughout the day. We spend so much of our life sitting and sleeping. Just doing one hour worth of exercise can make such a difference to your mind and your body too. Sometimes that means dancing. Sometimes it means mobility, mobility. And other times it means flexibility. <laughs> and if you're not there yet, you'll get there. Movement doesn't always have to mean you're doing weightlifting or running on a treadmill. It can mean jumping on a trampoline. It can mean dancing. It can be anything that makes you happy in movement. Sometimes we have to do things that push us to our limits because our mind wants to stay comfortable even if our body can take more. And it's in those moments when you push yourself the hardest that you end up growing the most. It helps you build physical, mental and emotional resilience which builds confidence in yourself as well. So next time your mind says no, Keep going! My parents have gone on a walk every single day together for the past 20 years and sometimes creating positive associations with people doing things that we don't quite like doing creates a better association with it. And so, pair the thing that you don't enjoy doing with someone that you enjoy doing it with. That way, you're more likely to stick to it and create healthier habits together. <laughs> One, two, three, go! One, two, three, four. We have a tendency to overeat and it's because we forget to listen to our hunger cues and the more that we ignore them the less they speak to us and so we end up overeating over and over again i started fasting every two weeks i don't eat grains or beans or pulses anything that is heavy on my digestive system i try to avoid for just one day our gut is linked to everything in our body our nervous system our hormones and so giving it a rest just once in a while can be so beneficial to allow it to rejuvenate replenish and to detox too it also helps to reset our hunger cues, getting us back to eating just how much we actually need. <sighs> we have become so used to listening to other people and going to other people about what we should be eating, how we should be treating our body, what workouts we should be doing. And so one thing I've done this past year is become so much more mindful about what does my body need? Not what does this person tell me my body needs, not what is this person doing for their body, but what does my body need? And so becoming more mindful about the food that we're eating and how it affects our body is so important. So the one thing I started doing was writing down the foods I was eating and then how they were making me feel. It's so simple. That's all you have to do. It's a food journal. And so it will help you to start understanding, oh, actually, this person said salads were so good for me and I'm eating salads, but I'm getting gas and bloating and it's making me feel uncomfortable throughout the day. Or I was you know, eating this gluten-free bread and I thought it was really good for me, but I'm feeling 
so lethargic after eating it. So when you start tuning back into your body and allowing the voices of other people to leave, it allows you to feel more confident in your own body, in your own intuition and what your body needs. And therefore you're able to understand it better and treat it better. So start following what your body actually is telling you versus what other people are telling you to do. And another tip, a lot of the time when you end up feeling hungry or when you think you're craving something, drink water because we are made of 60% water and our body usually is dehydrated. We don't drink enough. So the next time you're reaching for a cheeky little snack, a little um, gummy bear or a packet of crisps or chips, don't. Take some water first. Listen to whether your body still needs it. And then if you still want it, take a little bite. Meditation and breathwork have been a part of my life for nearly 10 years. Breathwork is something that I use to connect my mind back to my body. A lot of the time when we have anxiety or we're rushing through the day, our breath is lost in those moments. And so using your breath to help you navigate through the day, to help you navigate through your emotions and to use during your workouts too. Like that's something that has changed so much for me in the past year is using my breath to increase my strength, to increase my power during my workouts. Turn to breathwork throughout your day whether it's to relax you whether it's to energize you um, whether it's to increase strength and power in your body through breath you can harness so much so I recommend the next time you find yourself feeling anxious throughout the day or you find your mind racing take a moment take three deep breaths and notice the difference you feel in your mind and your body since I hit my 30s sleep has been something I have prioritized more than anything and the way that I've done that is by reminding myself what affects my circadian rhythm. And that's the rhythm of our body, our sleep rhythm of our body. A few practical ways that I started doing that was firstly, when I wake up, going outside and feeling the sun on my body, allowing my body to realize it is daytime right now. And then at night when the sun is setting, going back outside and resetting myself for the evening, recognizing that it is nighttime outside. It sounds so simple, but it is so effective. Another thing that we don't realize affects our circadian rhythm is lighting. Putting on candles instead of putting on bright lights at night. So your body remembers and continues to remember that it is nighttime and it's time to wind down. That has made such a difference to me moving into my deeper sleep and getting better rest at night. All the things that I've shared with you today are part of Vivo Barefoot's nine principles of natural health. They've been created to connect you back to nature, reclaim your natural potential and regenerate your natural health. I first heard about Vivo Barefoot because of their shoes. Now, these shoes have helped me to reconnect back to my feet, to allow my feet to move and exist in its natural pattern and to feel more strength and stability in my body. I hope these principles help you and I hope you try them out. They genuinely have changed my life in many, many ways. So let me know if you do. 